It seems after visionary filmmaker George Lucas created his magnum space opera opus Star Wars, nearly every director wanted to make their very own sci-fi epic, be it James Cameron's Avatar or the Wachowski's Matrix series. So now it's director Zack Snyder's turn with his very own franchise builder Rebel Moon. But instead of coming up with something more original or unique, Snyder takes it upon himself to borrow directly from the source, as in the Force, as in Star Wars. In this somewhat anticipated space epic series set in an alternate galaxy where the mother world, the Galactic Empire ran by oligarchs, send their conquering army, the Imperium, to plunder the crops on the planet Vel. Admiral Atticus Noble arrives to negotiate origin with the harvesting villagers in a you know where this is going build up reminiscent to the Inglorious Bastards opening. But instead of Hans Landa, we see the head space Nazi in charge Atticus dressed up like Aaron Rommel, attacking defenseless villagers to the extent of murder and attempted rape. That is, until our main hero, Korra, no not that Korra, but a former soldier who sought refuge after a brutal past only to defend the villagers. And fed up with the Imperium's act of oppression, Korra, played by Sofia Botella, becomes this unifier by assembling various warriors to rebel against the imperialist forces of the mother world. But not all in one chapter, of course. It seems that Snyder is very unapologetic when it comes to referencing Star Wars, and it shows when both Korra and Gunna enter a cantina with full harassment trope in tow, followed by a Han Solo archetype Kai played by Charlie Hunnam, who even has his own quote-unquote Millennium Falcon with his Irish bro that's just as cringe-inducing as the film's overall dialogue, and at times what substitute for dialogue gives plenty of screaming, if not throwing out long soliloquies. The similarities between Rebel and Star Wars, primarily Rogue One, doesn't end there. We have a Native American-like warrior called Tarak who sounds awfully familiar to Turok as in the Dinosaur Hunter. Tarak doesn't do much throughout the movie as while Digimon Hansu as General Titus is just pushed aside once the action starts 30 minutes in, it doesn't really matter at that point because the first 38 minutes could have been focused on better things like quality storytelling. While I get how Zack is trying to cram as much backstory as allotted within this 2 hour and what 15 minute movie, I can do without the preamble flashbacks. The visual effects fit within the confines of the film's budget but it's more the director's signature trademark and stylized aesthetic that adds more flair during the action sequences. In some ways, it's like watching a movie based on the PlayStation game Killzone. Remember that one? Uh, I guess some of you don't. In my opinion, Rebel Moon is on the same cringe level as J.J. Abrams' Rise of Skywalker. So you're better off waiting for that sweet director's cut to see whether or not there have been significant improvements or better yet, rewatch Rogue One. You know, the superior Star Wars film from this decade. It's unfortunate that the same director who gave us such great films like Dawn of the Dead, Watchmen, Man of Steel, and Batman vs. Superman, okay, the last one is highly debatable, has ended what remains of his illustrious career with this caravan of cringe. Rebel Moon is a rebel with a pause, as in pressing the pause button for extended laughter at this dumpster fire. Please give a like, share, and subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you.